What's going on, everybody? I'm Adrian Hunter from over here at AM Hookah Podcast, Pipe Dream Hookah, or THL. You'll see me creeping around. And today, I've got a pretty interesting thing going on right here next to me, probably right there on the screen. I've got Mr. John Natter. Is that how you pronounce your last name, John? Anyway, sure. yeah, that, that doesn't part. matter. You're Hookah John. That's what people know you as. What's going on, John? Not too much. Ending up the day here. Glad that you're having me on, and uh, this should be fun. Yeah, I, I sure hope so. I am. So I've been spending my entire time here just getting ready for the uh, for this little event, and I haven't let it ca- catch up to me that I have to actually sit here and talk to John. I've been following you for, like, ever. I actually watch all your YouTube content, too, so I'm a little bit giddy right now. But <laughs> let's go ahead and start this. So here's how we're going to structure this. This is a, uh, for anyone who doesn't know what's going on here, it's THL's birthday this month. We're doing a series of interviews with a lot of the biggest people in the industry, different enthusiasts, stuff like that. And we're going to do an interview with Mr. Hookah John. And we'll start with a little bit of a little bit of questions for me, just talking about some of the things that I might want to know from John himself. Then we're going to talk about a couple other cool things, like maybe this new old bowl that's out on the market and this expo thing people have been talking about. And then we'll, at the end, maybe do some question and answer. Um, But let's go ahead and start with John. What are you smoking today, man? I am smoking Tangier's Mimin. Oh, Mimon. They're lemon mint flavor. That's awesome. What's your setup look like, dude? You've always got the best setups. Let's see if I can do this right now, if this will show you anything. I'm on a laptop, so it's going to be hard. Let me unplug real quick, and then we can show this. I'm using one of these Brazilian hookahs. I, I swear I don't know the name. I'm sorry, but it's pretty <laughs> good. We got it on an HPA Boho. Oh, wow. I'm um, just testing it out. I'm bring it to the U.S. I've got one of the uh, Resurrection 80 Feet Bowls, three cubits, and a flavor saver, along with what's coming out, hopefully within a couple of months. I teamed up with some other people in Egypt, some uh, that do better work. I like the Shika hose, and I'm going to be having them make the new Narbeast hose. Nar, did you say Narbeast? Narbeast, because <laughs> compared to the Narbeast hose, it is a beast. I mean. Uh, we actually have one here. That, that, I think I made a video on it if you guys want to see it. Someone's using a Narby shear. It's still connected to their hookah. But uh, this one is just wider in gauge as far as the handle. I don't know if you can see it too well. There, get him right next to the And it's got a wider gauge hose, and I like it. And um, you That's know, the pretty, uh... Egyptians messed up with me so many times that yeah. I just said, forget it. I need a new supplier. All right, oh, great. so you're drinking beer. Is it I am. o'clock where you are? It's right, well, for me, it's 7 o'clock, 7.13 now. Sorry for the stream going on late, guys. I, um, I'm i not very good at this live streaming on Facebook thing quite yet. So here we are, better late than never. But yeah, I am drinking beer. What is it for you right now, John? Like four? It's only four, yeah. Quarter past four. I miss um, four o'clock. So, yeah. And so I'll be, I'll be in your position soon, probably drinking some wine. Outstanding. And, yep, yep. All, All right, right, so... What do we want to talk about? I've seen these. I don't keep up with them all the time. Um, Some of them seem to be dull. Some of them seem to be exciting. And then they drag on for like, you know, an hour or so and you lose interest. What are Mm -hmm. we doing here today? Lead the way, Adrian. All right. Here's how I'd like to structure this, John. I'm going to ask you a few really minute questions. And these questions are going to be like, I feel like you've been an industry leader for so long that people don't even like think to ask these questions anymore. Really simple stuff. And then I'm going to ask you two big questions. One's going to be about a bowl. One's going to be on an expo. And I'm going to let you do most of the talking because I need to be educated too. And at the end, we'll open it up for questions and answers slash if there's anything you wanted to talk about, new stuff, things that might be going on, stuff like that. We'll open that up at the end. But to start, here's a question that I feel like you may not get a lot because um, you've been doing this for so long, like since... I don't even know when you started this, John. That's a good place to start. When did you get into the industry? Uh, exactly 10 years ago last month. Wow. Um, I, was, I was in another industry, non-related, real estate. Everything crashed out in the industry. And um, I was just sitting there smoking hookah every night thinking about what am I going to do next because real estate is all but dead for me. Mm-hmm. So um, smoking at home said, why don't I get into this? Someone had brought me over a... a a box of coconut coal from Lebanon said, what do you think of these? And I'd never seen them. I'm like, these are great. I think the U.S. market would love these, blah, blah, blah. So I went and got some and did some research and back and forth. In that time, uh, another brand hit the market, Coconar, a big, awesome brand. And um, and I was like, ah, shit, I'm not the first one to market. But oh, well, it still went good. So we did that, went online, did really good with the uh, hookah communities that were available then, like Hookah Pro, Hookah Forum, 
Uh, yeah. I don't know if Reddit was available then. Um, there's a long history. I have it all written up somewhere, but I know, you know, after 10 years, you notice like every generation, they used to be like three years, then two years, then one year. And now it's like a generation that lasts six months. So maybe there are new people and I shouldn't be impatient in, in explaining it to them. But um, I mean, I can go on for hours. It's been 10 years to wrap it up in, in just a, a couple of minutes. <clears throat> it's not fair to, to anyone. Um, but we can talk about where we are today. I mean, in a nutshell, um, you know, it, Kuko is just something that I liked and it got me through a bad time and then it was supposed to be temporary, but all of a sudden I saw the potential in it and how awesome it was and started making more products to the market, started growing, had my own forum going um, before everything switched over to like Instagram and, and Facebook and things have just been going uphill all the time. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's really good. It's really fun. Um, this is a fun job. Like when you're talking to, when people come in and they want to talk to me or on the phone or email, it's not like you're emailing your insurance agent or your, your, your tax accountant or something where you just want to get off the phone. Uh, people are like really happy to, to spend time and, and look at what they're getting and all that. Um, to fast forward a little bit um, onto the expo, the reason we did, um, we've got Hookah Expo Worldwide coming up is because these other countries that I, I thought like, Huka was just big in the Middle East. And then after years have gone by, I've been noticing it's huge in Brazil, in mm -hmm. Russia, in Germany, um, and all of Europe. And I went to some of these expos and I'm like, how come we don't have this in the US? I mean, we're these United States. What we're all right, this is gonna sound some people may take this the wrong way, but we're bigger and better at everything. All right. I believe that. Um, not necessarily everything, but when we do something here, look at you're drinking beer. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to, in, in my generation as a kid, I'd see the older people drinking import beer. You get a Bex or a Heineken and ooh, you're some bourgeois guy. But now look how awesome beer is in America. I mean, compared to the rest of the world, the beer industry is just amazing with all the craft that's coming out. Um, same thing with wine. I mean, it used to be France is all about wine. There's some other great countries like Chile and Argentina and, and Australia. But you know what? U.S. wine, it, it's at least in my opinion and my tastes, U.S. wine is, is killing it across the world. So how come in hookah we're, we're lacking a little bit? How come we don't have something where the consumer can mm -hmm. actually get together once a year, socialize, meet all their uh, online buddies and people they don't know who have the same interests in them in this awesome, amazing um, hobby of ours and, um, and get to meet with the brand owners um, just like they're doing it in the other countries. So uh, last year was the first Tuka Expo Worldwide. It was pretty good. We had a really good turnout for a first time event. I mean, it was a huge risk and um, and I was able to pull it off. It wasn't as big as I wanted, but this year it's getting to be as big as I wanted. I mean, we've got all the major brands coming on so far. Um, there's a list. If you go to the um, TukaExpoWorldwide.com page, you'll see that we've got, I mean, the big brands, we got Alfacker, we got Starbuzz, we got Maya Hookah surprisingly took a huge boost. Really? Um, so it's gonna, yeah, I want to see what they have in store for us. Um, one of the other bigger ones, who's the other big one? Zomo from Brazil. And I was just in Brazil last month. Um, they're like the kings over there. So it's going to be awesome. To see, but they're like not super huge here at all. They're just like right. kind of getting into the U.S. And um, just the vibe that they've got is different and awesome. And I wish we'd have some Russians. Um, and I, I'm just going to ramble on, but like Russians, like this guy came by, this guy is, um, exhibiting to, and he's not one of the big guys, but, right. uh, he's an American made tobacco, but he's Russian background. And for the last few years, everything he was making was being the best market. He's got me and some of the other online guys on board. And he just, he came to my office today and said, I want to do something. I want to do a raffle. So here's the raffle. Uh, you buy Azure from hookahjohn.com or a five star or hookah junkie. You, you buy four 250 gram packs. You okay. put in your notes, I want to be entered into the Azure uh, raffle. And this goes until May 31st. So you've got uh, the rest of this month and next month. And check out these prizes. Okay, two people are gonna get a two pack of tickets to Hookah Expo Worldwide. Two people are gonna get uh, a kilo, uh, you know, four 250 gram packs of Azure. And then the grand prize is uh, airfare, hotel, and tickets to Hookah Expo Worldwide and anywhere wow. in the continent. 
the United States. You got to be 21, all that uh, blah, blah, blah stuff. But I mean, how amazing is that? He, he's one of the smaller guys. So these bigger brands that I've been talking to lately are, um, see so guys, these bigger brands that we've been talking to lately, they're like, we're going to be doing this. Starbuzz already said 100 gram tin to everybody who shows up. Everybody Whoa. who shows up walks in the door. Um, That's like probably 2,100 grand tins or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a lot of money to give out. I mean, that's a lot of delivery. They're, they're spending the money on you guys, so I'm really uh, happy that they were able to. We got so much more this year than last year, because I mean, honestly, this is stuff that I tell them. Last year, everyone's like, "Well, we want to see how it goes before we commit to exhibiting." I'm like, yep. "Motherfucker, it's gonna, it's not gonna be good if you don't show up." Exactly. Right? I need you there to make it good. Right, so <laughs> absolutely, they showed up, uh, or they they all committed this time. It was really good. Um, so they're all going to be here this year. Um, some of the um, I don't I don't like to say smaller brands because the fact that they're doing this is very big of them. I mean, you got like the Phoenix Puka is coming out. You know, the HMD. Um, you've got uh, Sir Bentley Tobacco, which is new to the U.S. Kind of. Mm -hmm. um, you've got. Uh, Regal Hookah, everyone thinks Regal is huge, which they are in status, but um, it's really like a mom and pop shop. They're coming out. A pack of bowls is coming out. Um, I'm trying to go by memory here. Oh, now is uh, Regal, are they representing Tangiers again this year? I believe so, yeah. Awesome. Very and good. you got yeah, Trifecta, who doesn't like Trifecta? They're coming out. Um, Chica Hookah is coming out. Ugly Hookah is coming out. And um, Hookah Fina, which no one talks about, or not that many people talk about them, they're coming out. Um, a brand out of Deer Dearborn, uh, 360 Tobacco is coming out. Oh, yeah. They're um, local. Yeah. Again, Basilios with uh, his Prometheus line, his headquarters Hookah line. Um, who else? Did I miss anyone? Power Hookah? I have no idea who they are. Jake signed them up. Oh, Fumari is another big one. Fumari never does. They, yeah. They only started... Uh, exhibiting at expos in the past like year or two, which is uh, it's pretty. Good. What do you know about Fumari? There's no face to Fumari. Same right. thing with like a packer. Who, who, I mean, what are they other than a brand that you always buy? It's just like buying Coke. But do you know who made Coca Cola? I mean, right. Exactly. I mean, yeah, you got like Jim from Ugly. Everyone knows Jim's got Ugly. Moose from over at Trifecta. A lot of these companies we have today have like this huge social media. Um, image and brands like Alfaker and Fumari just y you don't know who's in charge of that so it's pretty interesting that they're gonna be coming out how big is Fumari's b booth uh, they get one of the bigger ones a 40 by awesome. 40 so the, that's Beautiful. the one that I forgot the, the big guys the big dogs who are gonna have the biggest booths are Starbuzz Zoma Zomo Maya Fumari and Alfaker and um, other than that I I'm gonna have a medium booth a is gonna have a medium booth Somehow we've got a couple of pending medium booths and then the small booths, which are not small. If you've ever been to these expos, um, oh, Coco Earth is going to be there. I forgot to mention them. Awesome. Um, yeah. So you've got uh, the smaller booths, which is double the size of a booth at most. They're 20 by 10s rather than a 10 by 10. Right. That's still, pre that's still a pretty good size. Yeah. So um, it's, it's – and the way we have the layout – it's going to be like hookah lounge setting. So every booth is going to have couches and tables and chairs, and it's just going to be, uh, it's just made to have a good time. Outstanding. Are there any uh, after parties or anything planned for the weekend? I know last year you had some stuff going on at uh, a couple local lounges. What's going on this year for after the uh, expo ends for the night? Yeah, so last year there were a couple of lounge events. I believe one was at Starbucks Hookah Lounge. Um, I didn't go to it. I, I was just, I had family coming in. We had, um, and I think, I forget who else did it, whether it was Luna or Oasis. I'm pretty sure Oasis did. And we had a pool party at the hotel. So this year we didn't want to get the hotel because I had to commit to like 100 rooms. Towards the end I had to pay for like 10 empty rooms. So I didn't do that this year. The exhibitors are planning things. So I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it now. I'm not going to say who, but one of them is really excited about getting like an Airbnb mansion to do Ooh. a mansion so that's going to be pretty killer. I'll have more updates on that soon. So, I mean, not to go on and on about the expo, but I, I really want you guys out there watching. You, you got to make this event. I mean, it's summertime. Take a vacation. Who doesn't need a little push to go to Las Vegas? It's just, right. it's, it's, uh, it's just a friendly city to, like, it's easy to book a hotel. It's easy to fly there. 
and it's easy to get around. Um, so it's, I mean, it's going to be an amazing event. So please get your tickets now before prices go up. We try to encourage people to buy the tickets up front so we can gauge who's there so we can tell the exhibitor, look, we've got this many people already signed up. Right. So um, uh, last year, for the first time, we got 650 or so. But the cool thing about it, not a huge number, that it was a first event, but people came from 12 countries around the world, which is, I mean, people from South Africa showed up, from Russia, from Germany, from Brazil, uh, different, um, I, I remember counting all of them. I mean, people from different countries in Africa showed up. People from the Middle East showed up, uh, France, uh, and other European countries. Canada was there, um, you know, Badger from Hot Oxide Hookah, and then, I mean, he's in the industry, but also uh, some, some consumers. And then, I mean, people came from all the way from Hawaii, Miami, New York. So Vegas is the perfect spot for it, and I hope to see as many people as I can out there. Now, how many slots do we have at the expo that are still uh, vacant? Do we, how many more uh, companies could we potentially see? Right now, I think we only have spots for one, two. According to the map, only four or five. But we might rearrange some things. We're able to like push back the wall um, oh. Because the good thing about it is that is only half of one of the expo spaces, and they put up a fake cur a fake wall, or I forget what they mm -hmm. call it. It's basically a curtain. And if we want to buy into the next one, we just have to double our costs. But we might try to stretch as much as we can in this, but we still have three months, and we're still like signing people today. Jake told me, I forget who. We, we have some uh, pretend Nareen Coles, the new coal on the market. They gave a verbal confirmation. Um, I have to look at my list, but there's, we oh, still yeah. have a few. Yeah, I yeah, got to try like, those out at the Chicago meetup. Have you ever been to one of those, the uh, Chicago hookah meetups that uh, Mason Bowles No, was? I need to, because I've never been to Chicago, and I know all the guys out there. And, oh, man, uh, it was great this year. You should have come. It was awesome. Yeah, I want to go see that. I want to go do that. Um, but we should have more of these, like, around around the states, like, every month. It would be great if someone organized something like that, where, I mean, you get to try i mean every city is cool every city's got its uh, hookah smokers there mm -hmm. so not you know you can do big cities you can do small cities um you know i'd like to travel i just went to the week you guys were doing the weekend you were doing it in chicago uh you went to that oh yeah absolutely it's a four-hour drive from dearborn so i just drove out there nice um i went to uh basilius headquarters hookah grand opening he had a smaller lounge he went into a bigger spot the crowd uh there the local crowd just really supports him and loves him and they came out everyone's helping they showed us a great time and so um yeah i think we need to do more of these things mm -hmm. yeah all those types of meetups and uh, expos and stuff i'd like to see way more of that happening we've actually got a question in the chat but we'll move on to q and a in a little bit um is there anything else you wanted to add about the expo expo before i start to ask you about some bowls uh, no, I, I, I wasn't looking, so I'm seeing some of the comments now. I don't know if I missed anything. Um, no, we can move on. I, I, I made the point about the expo. Just please be there. It's going to be awesome. And, um, I mean, the more, and plus also, please spread the word about it. Put it in other than, I mean, this is the hookah lounge. We've got hookah John circle of friend. It's got, it's, um, it's all over the place with, uh, hookah university, but do it in other groups if you can just get as many people there as you can. Uh, just spread the word, help us out. The exhibitors are going to be doing their part. They're, they're spending a lot of money to do this. Um, and we want to make it so it's a yearly thing. Yeah. So, As I understand it, uh, due to some of the content you put out late last year, uh, it looked like it almost didn't happen this year. It didn't. I get to give credit to Jake. Him and I were in a meeting, and um, I, I really can't handle it. With the way my work is going, I can't keep up with I, I couldn't do this alone how about that you know people are asking me even like other tobacco companies a guy from Azure today was saying when are you going to make your own line people have been asking me for years I'm like I know but I mean it's kind of time consuming mm -hmm. I Absolutely. can't do it all by myself yeah you can hire on more people but qualified people are kind of hard to find I don't know I'm not going to make a tobacco anytime soon uh, the, the expo didn't I almost gave up on it I, I did, and you guys know me. I'm, if you've followed me for years, you know that I'm honest. I try not to overhype. I never say something is gonna be great if it's not. I never promise anything that I can't deliver on. And I 
if it was just going to be me on the expo, it wouldn't have happened. Right on, man. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad that uh, Jake came in because it doesn't look, I don't think he's with Starbucks anymore, but it seems like he's doing his own thing. So it's pretty interesting to see him go from being like just hookah rev to who he is now. But now I got some questions about some bowls because you sent me out a little care package before we did this thing. And previous to it, I had these two guys, which is like, I gotta, I don't know, you say all the time in your content that you don't pay any attention to like generations and stuff, but this is actually an, an unstamped 80 feet bowl. I got like a while ago and this thing's cool. And then right. I got like the, what they call the gen three 80 feet bowl. But you just sent me this thing that you call the eight feet resurrection bowl. Is that, is that what you call it? This guy right here. Yeah. And I would like to know a right. little bit about why this exists because you seem to have been bringing back a lot of your older bowl styles, whether it be the uh, retro harmony or the, was the alien flashback bowl. You seem to be doing that a lot. So I'm interested to hear some of your reasoning and thoughts as to why this bowl exists and why you brought it to the market. Okay. So bowls in general and our bowls and stuff. Okay. Uh, when we started making bowls, it was the alien, and there wasn't much competition out there, and everybody had one. Everyone's pretty satisfied with them. And then we came out with a few more bowls, like the Harmony and the 80 Feet and a few others. Um, over time, it kind of started varying. That's why people refer to them as gens. It's because of maybe what you got one year, and then the next year you bought another one, another year, and they're they're different. But these, this is uh, me kind of repeating myself, but they're, um, you know, what I've said in the past, they're handmade. They're they're literally handmade. They're spun on clay. There's a bunch mm -hmm. of videos out there now that shows other people making them. Uh, they don't come out all the uh, the same all the time, and also they um, uh, due to shrinkage, weather, uh, drying time, and all that stuff, they do vary. Then there are no two hundred percent identical ones, but we try our best to keep them consistent, and that goes for all the quality bowls out there. Um, right. There are other bowls that are all 100% consistent because they're made with molds and we just don't want to do that. Um, so we went on to, as, as far as the 80 feet, um, people were saying, oh, I like less tobacco. I want to burn less tobacco for a longer time. I mean, all right, great. I'm hooping John. I do whatever the customer wants and under protest most of the time, but I end up doing what they want. And so I, um, I made the 80 feet 80, which is just a wider spired one that holds less tobacco, meaning it's more shallow, which was cool. And I liked it, but there are a lot of people out there that don't really care about saving every gram of tobacco. And no. It was like bothering me. I was, I was going back to my 80 feet more than my 80 feet 80s. I'm like, why am I not using 80 feet? Um, they're great for that one hour session. I can still get like two hours and three hours if I push it, but you know, I'm not like every consumer out there. I have the tobacco at my disposal, so I'll get a fresh bowl whenever I want. Um, so I found this 80 feet bowl. This is one that was a very old one that I liked. Um, uh, it's got markings on it because we took it back to the, uh, the factory where we make these. I said, I like this shape the most. See, not that this matters. Aesthetically, I like it the most. I just like the way they come in at an angle here rather than it being curved. Um, I like the depth and I like the curve in here. And look, all these bowls are going to smoke and you're going to have great sessions. Mm -hmm. So I'm not being picky, but after a while I said, I can't just listen to everyone. I need to do what I want. I, I like the spire diameter. I like the, the height of it. And I gave them this. I said, duplicate this as many times as you can. I want you to keep working on this one and do not break it. I want you to keep making these till you're blue in the face because that's it. I have to make a decision. I have to take a stand. And I called it the res. Actually, I called it something else, the return. And one of the online guys said, call it the resurrection. I'm like, oh, great, great. We'll do that. Um, so is it better than the old 80 feet bowls? Is it better than uh, a, com uh, a competing bowl? I don't know. I enjoy them. A lot mm -hmm. of people enjoy them. They're, they're doing great. We're proud of them. Um, our bowls are actually copied a lot. It used to be the Vortex Bowl was the most copied bowl. Right, now right. I'm mine, uh, like the Harmony and the 80 Feet are the most copied bowls. Uh, now the 80 Feet, find. the 80 Feet's got a pretty interesting uh, name, John. Uh, is, is there any reason it's called the uh, 80 Feet by, by chance? Um, yeah, there is this story behind that. You're, you're, um, <laughs> you know now, I'm a, I'm you a Dearborn native, so I'm being a little cheeky right now. So one of my guys who's not a Dearborn native and not a not even a Middle Eastern guy, but he came up to me and he asked me. We we're trying to think of a name for the bowl and we we're doing work and back and forth and 
and just couldn't come up with a name. All it was is like a mini harmony, right? Mm -hmm. um, for the most part. And he said, hey, John, what's 80 feet? Or he said, what's 40 feet plus 40 feet? I'm like, shut up, dude. I don't, I'm not interested in what you're doing. I'm concentrating on my work. Because no, seriously, what's 40 feet plus 40 feet? I go, and I kept like saying, dude, I'm busy. Go away. And he kept <laughs> asking me that question. I said, 80 feet like that. <laughs> and, and, I, and I just I'm like standing. dropped my head. I started laughing. I'm like, that's classic. All right, that's the new name of the bowl. And it, it was just born out of that. Outstanding. You know, so very, yeah. People have been... Uh, all these, I always see, uh, I love reading the comments where people say it was named after somebody or is it named because of this reason, which is not true. And um, I'm like, all right. I even, they said I, uh, it was named uh, someone, people were telling, okay, one person will say something then people start parroting it on the forums. And then everyone was saying that I said it towards, I named it for Alex with five star. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I instantly texted you know that's not true that has nothing to do with you because i know it's just i wouldn't do that um i mean i've done some things in the past that I mean, could be similar but that is not the story on the 80 people yeah that is a simple most uh unclimactic story yeah. that you could ever hear about it's, it's just whole. very interesting because if you know you know it's a it sounds phonetically like something else um so it's very interesting yeah. i just wanted to get your take on that really quick while i had you here and I'm really quick, just going to get to chat really quick, because there's a lot of people in here watching. I'm going to say, what's up? What's going on, Elias, Michael, Marcio? I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, dude. I'm bad with names. Junior, uh, Arby's here. What's going on, Arby? Brandon, what's up? You got Fletcher. Fletcher's in here. That's pretty sweet. Um, Gregory, Chris, Paul. What's going on, dude? And uh, I think that's kind of it. Nope. Hang Pop? Is that how you pronounce your name, dude? I have no clue. Let me know. Tommy's here from the uh, admin team on THL and so is Frank we got Tom Ferris Tom himself and then who else we got David we got a lot of people in here Badia of Alpha Comma USA John are they gonna be there by any chance at the expo yeah don't don't ask me we've hit them up where's where's Badia uh, hey. Badia from uh, Alpha Comma are hey. you guys gonna be at Hookah Expo worldwide Badia what's going on man I wanna see uh, Alpha Comma at the expo that would be awesome. They were actually at the Chicago Hookah Meetup, and it was a riot. They did this contest where they did, like, mixes. And my boy, I think it was actually in chat, Tristan, he got third place for a orange cherry gum with mint mix. And I hate cherry flavors normally, but Karma's cherry flavor is insane. So they were doing that with Karma, actually, not Alpha Karma. Yeah, you know what? Come to think of it, I think he is in talks with Jake right now, and he might be on the fence. So I don't know if he'll post or comment, but... Um, I think they're one of the prospects that we still have out there. So it'd be great to see the more brands, the better. I mean, they're killing it. Their blonde leaf is like probably one of the best performing blonde leaves in the market right now. That's just my opinion. I've had the chance to sample like 20 of their flavors and they've all been outstanding. Their new freeze line. Have you had anything from that? Like the passion fruit mango freeze? I haven't tried any of it yet. You got to get your hands on that um, stuff. It's been so many years of this that I'm sticking with my basics for the most part. I mean, honestly, as a smoker, it's like 50, 50, Tangiers or Alfacker, and just the same old flavors over and over. Um, I'm trying some new brands here. I, I, I go back to Starbuzz every once in a while. Um, they've got some great flavors. It's just uh, becoming a, a creature of habit. Mm -hmm. And um, even like that Lebanese bombshell by Starbuzz, I opened up again recently. I have to do that like twice a year. Um, it's that Alchemist cedar one. flavor, right? Yeah. Have you tried it? Yeah, I have tried it. It was a while back. I actually. I, like I said, I watch a lot of your content, and you're talking about it in one of your videos from like two years ago. So I picked it up. Right. It was uh, it was originally made as a. It, it wasn't going to be released, and I'm thankful for Starbuzz for letting me in on, on, um, on uh, helping them make the decision on that. I insisted that they release that, and he does give me. Wild gives me credit for that, and I mean, not that I'm looking for the credit or anything. I just thought it was an awesome flavor. Release it. They thought uh, it won't be. A good mainstream brand i'm like maybe it's not but it's so unique and different nobody else has one Dude, yeah please release it and so um they did and it worked out pretty good and i thank them for that yeah it's um, kind of like them doing green savior like not everyone enjoys like a pond flavor but the green savior i picked that up once and i was like this is amazing and i don't typically smoke starbuzz just because there's so much stuff on the market to try and i'm a reviewer so i'm always trying new stuff but starbuzz does have some right. really good stuff in their blonde line yeah um, and they're doing, they're getting more diverse with their dark line stuff, the vintage and the serpent. Um, 
But it's going to be great to see what they have going on at the expo. They're one of the first ones that committed, and they said, we want to do this. I, I don't want to um, say what he is offering, even though I already did about the 300 grams to everyone, because he did that publicly. Mm -hmm. But in our private talks, he's talking about, I mean, I'll throw it out there. He, he's he's going to do one of those major major giveaways, like for one person to come in or whatever. Oh, that's um, awesome. I think all the brands, yeah, a lot of the brands are going to be doing something like, you know, having some contests to bring people in. Um, and I'm trying to help out the brands too because a lot of them don't have experience in consumer uh, trade shows or how to even interact with the consumer. They know how to spread their product across the country, across the world, but they don't even know who their consumers are. Right. And I have a good idea on who the consumer is. Uh, they're not all the same, but one thing I would say is that they would um, really appreciate being able to have some face time with people behind the brand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So really and quick. So that's what I'm, go ahead. We're at the half hour mark, so I'm going to open it up to chat. Guys, if you have any questions for Mr. Hukujan himself, drop them in the chat. Probably go for like 15 more minutes or so. So if you got any questions you maybe wanted to ask him that you know I might not be going over, drop them in the chat and we'll, he, he, you'll make the decision on whether or not you ask him. Ask whatever you want though, guys. And um, Yeah, it's like, with me and you talking, and, and this is what is about. Yeah. It's, socializing, just chilling, smoking hookah. This could go on for hours. I don't know who watches this, if you mm -hmm. if the guys are interested in watching this, but I'm glad they are, and I kind of have, I know a bunch of these guys, like there's a junior DJ run one, Michael Chavez, know him personally now through the hookah community. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, most of these guys I just chat with Paul, chat with online here and there, uh, folks, Tommy and Frank, um, who else is there? But that's a good thing about hookah. We can keep going on and on. There's Fletcher, too. Fletcher's a good guy. Met him at all the shows, all the uh, expos, and then he came out uh, a couple of weeks ago. RB I met in person, a really good dude. Um, so the great thing, everyone's going to be, you know, just socializing and and, and, um, and, uh, and just having a good time with each other. I mean, over hookah. It's mm -hmm. going to be a great event. So I guess my point was, we can go on for hours just talking about, there's so much to talk about for people's opinions and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I guess if you wanna ask a question, I'm yeah. wide open. I got a few people. First off, this is from Paul, and he asks, um, you're in the industry obviously, so you might have some insight. Are there any new products that haven't been talked about very much that, uh, that we should be on the lookout for right now? Okay, um, as far as hookah, John, yeah, this hose is coming out. Uh, it's not super exciting, but I, I think it is. It's just a rebranded Narbiche. They're a different manufacturer. We're calling it the Narbiche hose. Uh, it's bigger, wider, uh, wider gauged, uh, more durable than the Narbiche hose. So I'm looking forward to these coming out in the next, say, month or so. Uh, we also have that one, it's not here, um, that one hose that people have been seeing me. It's like a real heavy metal handle hose, mm -hmm. and uh, that's going to come out. I think that one's got about a two-month lead time on it. Um, that's as far as uh, hookah John products. Um, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time focusing on this expo. Other brands bringing out stuff. You know what? We all know that Starbuzz has uh, the carbine coming soon. Oh yeah. But they also have. Yeah, they also have a pretty. Okay, we've all seen that. That's the latest thing now. But they also have an accessory that's coming out that's pretty awesome. That I've been like. Uh, sworn a secrecy on and I just wish I could tell you about it. Oh man. Um, That's no good. But I just can't do that. Um who else? Who else? Alfacker oh. is supposed to have a new line coming out. A new they line from Alfacker. Whoa. Yeah. So that should be good. Um what are the other brand? I think Coco Earth is doing something that's non charcoal related. I haven't been told about it. other any more information than that. So that's going to be exciting. Um, just new brands hitting the market, like um, not that it's a new brand, but Cerbetli Tobacco. Mm -hmm. That's kind of exciting that they came. Um, the 360 guys revamped their stuff. I sure I hope so, because to be honest, I really didn't like what they were doing before. I can pick it up locally in gas stations here because they make it right in my hometown. Right, right. Um, hopefully the brands will be launching new stuff there. But as far as new products coming out, I'm such an impatient person. If it's not coming out next week, then 
it's like out of my mind. It's like I'm like, all right, whenever you bring it. Brands come and um, go a lot in this industry. Like you remember Starry, that brand that came out of nowhere for about a week. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it just happens um, a lot. It's just you know, yeah, people come in. I see that a lot. I don't want to like complain because every time someone puts something, all right, I will complain. How about that? Let's kick this up a notch. Yes, all right. please. Every day someone comes out with a new product, says, "Hey guys, look at this." And the comments that I read are so fluffy and positive. Everyone's like, <laughs> "Take my money." I'm like, "Take your money? What? Are you are you that loaded? They're just gonna take your money?" And they don't even like analyze the product. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, "That looks less than impressive." But I can't say anything anymore. All right, you want me to rant a little bit? Back in when we started this, we were able to speak our minds freely and criticize a lot more than we are now uh, than we can now. Now everybody is so overly sensitive that you can't say anything. And I've toned it down a lot because I have to be friends with, I mean, look at the guys who are, who are exhibiting at the expo. These guys are my competitors. Say, Coco Earth, a pack of bowls. Um, uh, the rest of the brands, let's say I carry, they're not competitors. But let's, if, if I was so against them, uh, I mean, these guys are supporting us, the whole community. They're supporting me for putting this on. They're supporting you guys by showing up. We, we need to get together and do this. But at mm -hmm. the same time, there's these other brands that come out and, I, I don't even know if I have examples because yeah. I'm just over right. Everyone's so excited about yeah. a new product, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, exactly. Like, I'll, I'll give an example because Brandon is a big boy and he can handle it. He knows uh, I don't have uh, any ill will towards him. But then he brought out this thing about a, a charcoal holder. And the thing looks kind of amazing, but I, I forget what the price was. It was like maybe 200 bucks, big deal. And it's like big and bulky and clumpy. And where are you going to put it? And they haven't made them yet. They're like in a fundraising thing. I'm just like, yeah, it's so <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's like uninteresting. Sorry, Brandon. Most of the stuff you bring to the table, Brandon, is is amazing. You All gotta right. be honest They're about that stuff, though. You can't uh, don't don't fluff it. You know what I mean? Just say what you gotta say right, about but, it. And I do gotta give you props on this before I move on questions. But I noticed that you started actually carrying Alpaca's line, which is like, I think that's really saying something because obviously you have your own prolific line of bowls. That you uh, you create and sell and everything, so it's really cool that people can now go to Hookah John and buy their Hookah John bowls and their Alpaca bowls. I think that's really cool. Right, I've done that with a lot of um, products lately. I try to like keep an open mind. You know, in the end, this is a business and it's all about me. Uh, who's number one and who's mm -hmm. going to do everything and it's competitive and all that. But at the same time, the consumer doesn't. Uh, the consumer needs uh, options. If they want to buy a box of Cocoa Earths, or that's their brand, good for them. You know what? I'm going to carry it because I'm going to provide them the best service in getting it to them. Right. Um, Alpacables, um, whether or not I have an opinion on it, uh, a million other people online do have opinions. And why am I not making it accessible to them? Right. It's very, um, very narrow minded. It's actually not a good business practice. So, um, and plus, I also like to deal with people that are cool. Uh, Omar is a cool guy. George from Coco is a cool guy. Um, there are these other bowls on the market that I don't carry. Just I don't see that. I'm, you know, I try not to carry products that don't sell. We've gotten a bunch of tobaccos in the past. We do one order, it still sits on the shelf. It takes two years to sell half of it. Mm -hmm. and that's one order, a, a case, a, a little case of every one of their flavors, and they don't go anywhere. So it's really frustrating on a business point of view. and. Um, but we do that so that we can have variety. Like let's say everyone says Five Star has the best variety. And I look at their brands, I'm like, I wouldn't carry half of these brands because they're just not gonna sell. Absolutely. Um, but who knows? I don't know everything when it comes to business. I don't know what, I can't read everybody's mind. Um, but either way, it's fun. We need more brands. So I don't mind new products coming to the table. I just wish we could get, um, you know, I just the more the better. So right. that's another thing. That's another reason why I went to these other markets too. I wanted to see what they're offering in um, Russia and Brazil right. and uh, Germany. And oh, MIGs. MIGs are huge. This is one thing I'm going to do at the expo that I thought of. We're going to line up one of each model of the MIGs so you can test them out and smoke them. But I'm not bringing 100 MIGs with me. Um, we'll have some system set up. You just click it, in, click it into the keypad and you'll have your order shipped out on Monday after the show. So you can try Beautiful. it in person. Um, okay, a lot of people, um, how do I say this, have their opinions on MIGs, whether they own one or not. And then some people um, may not like them for whatever their reason is. But, and I try not to overhype it, but I will say this. 
90% of the people who have taken a pull out of one will have one running in the warehouse when they walk in. And they're mm -hmm. not even looking for a new hookah. And you're talking like expensive hookahs, you know, three yeah. to Mix. six. They're six pricey as shit. Yeah. And they'll come in, take a few puffs, and they'll like take a few more. Within five minutes, they're like, all right, I want one. I got to have one. And yep. they walk out with one. And, um, and they have no regrets. I haven't had any complaints on them. And, um, well, you don't, you don't regret buying a quality product. That's just fact. Now, really, we got a few more questions if you want to get to those. And this one by uh, Kale. I think that's how you pronounce your name. Um, this is a question I'm actually very interested in. John, could you talk a little bit about the Titrus Bowl and why it was introduced inside of the new generation of the Trimini? Mm, that's a good question. I wanted to do something new at the time because, I mean, I mean, people are wanting new products. And, like, mm -hmm. How much can you change a bowl? Like within our facilities, we are limited because we're actually really high production um, when it comes to the bowls. Uh, the tritus. How do I tell them? We use the name tritus because it's got the tri word in it, and it has three features of. It has a feature of three different hookah jam bowls. Yeah, but the eighty it's feet, got, the red clay harmony, and um, the trimony. Exactly. So. Is, is it the best bowl? Is it a must-have? I don't know, man. Buy one and, and spread the word. If they suck, just say they suck. Um, I use one once in a while, and they're pretty impressive bowls. Are they going to be better than your 80 feet or, or your other brand bowl? Man, they're all smoke. Who's who's totally unhappy smoking hookah? That's got right. any one of these uh, high-end, not high-end, but like common accessories that we have out there. Everyone's right. having an enjoyable time, and I just like the fact that people are... Um, um, uh, buying these products uh, as a hobby. One guy told me something when I got into the business. He goes, why do you want to get into hookahs? I mean, a customer just buys, <coughs> there's no money in tobacco. Uh, a customer buys one hookah and then that's it. He's set for life. I'm like, nah, not think. even, not even. No way. I, like so, every month I'm like, how many fucking hookahs can I buy this month? How much money do I have laying around that I don't have to use on bills? Um, we've got Elias right. asking, this is an interesting question because it seems like this would take a lot of production effort. Any chance of the expo taking a tour of the U.S. one day? Um, I, I, I'm gonna be honest and say probably not. Maybe we. I'd love to try a different state. But the reason I didn't do it in California, where most of these guys are coming from, is because of smoking laws. We have to have hookah smoking going on. Right. When I, I heard the one that they had in New York, there's no hookah smoking going on. What's the point? And yeah. Who wants to go to that? Um, in Brazil, they had a new law this year. It's kind of a bummer. There's no smoking in the convention area, which was outdoors anyways. It just had a canopy over it, and people were smoking on the outskirts of the grounds there. Um, so Vegas is pretty uh, lenient when it comes to that. California is a big no. And that's why I almost gave up, because I was trying to bring it to California. Um, other states, I get, okay, let's say I do it in, uh, I don't know, Houston, Texas. Is anyone really going to fly out to Houston, Texas? The brands have to spend all this money, and now if it's huge, if it becomes like a a Coachella or a Comic Con or something, mm -hmm. yeah, then you have it traveling. If we're gonna get ten thousand people to show up or fifty thousand people to show up, yeah, you better believe we're gonna have them there. I honestly uh, we'll think, I think the infrastructure in America is big enough. It's just about spreading the word and getting people amped up enough to actually go experience these things. Yeah, that's the that's the the issue with Hookah right now. We need more consumers. Um, so, and it's all being spread most of the time by, you got a buddy that's never heard of hookah, like you haven't seen him in five years, you, ca you catch up, I'm like what do you got there, a hookah pipe, well what is it? And then you get him into it, and there, there's your new consumer. We don't have like, uh, too much marketing going on. Our, our consumer base isn't huge, it needs to be grown. So, um, yeah, if it gets to that side, so I, I, I shouldn't have been negative with Elias, and I should have said yes, for sure, it will be traveling. Mm -hmm. But honestly, that's going to take some time in growing the market, and that's we're still at that stage of uh, you know getting that one show out right for a year. Now, so, uh, uh, Baki asks, why didn't you visit the Shisha Messe in Frankfurt this year? Uh, honest uh, personal answer is I've been traveling a lot in the past twelve. I did like five countries in the past twelve months, and. Um, I am in the child raising stage of my life right now, mm -hmm. and it's hard to leave awakened kids. I have three kids, and they've got their schools and sports and all these activities going on. It's I really don't like to leave them. I honestly don't like. I love traveling. I don't like to leave my family. 
So, That's fair. Um, yeah, I did it once. It was a great time. I loved it. Um, all the trips I've taken have been amazing. And um, I could be traveling just the States like once a week. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, once every two weeks, going to different lounges and, and events, but it's just I don't like to travel. That's to all. be honest, and this might be a little selfish, I, I'd much prefer that you have your efforts centralized here in America anyway, because I'd like to see hookah has been growing over the past few years, and I, I think you could probably say that at any point, but um, I, I'd really like to see it grow even further. Now, Hagop, man, I'm so sorry if I'm just butchering your name, but this is a good question, because we were just talking about German-made products, the Made in Germany hookahs. And he asks, do you plan on carrying Russian products, for example, the Matt Pear, uh, UPG Bowls, Dark Side Tobacco? And I'm intrigued because I actually had my first chance to try a Matt Pear at the uh, Chicago Hookah Meetup, and those hookahs are actually awesome, in, in my honest opinion. Sure. This is going to, uh, I don't know if he's purposefully doing this or he's pushing me to rant, but I'll gladly rant. And this awesome. is all in fun and everything. That's why people are here. <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll so get some better questions so we can uh, do this so I can like um, get a little heated. Here's the deal with Matt Pair. It's not just Matt Pair. It's all these Russian companies. They don't have a business channel that makes sense for us to bring them into the U.S. For example, and these are not ex- exact numbers, but I said, all right, so your Wuka uh, retails for 200 bucks, right? Okay, I want 50 of them just to test out so I can spread them out here. What's my cost? Many of you guys are not in business. Many of you guys are. What do you think a fair price would be? For a retailer, at least, not even a wholesaler. Don't you think I want to, uh, as a retailer, for the money that we uh, uh, put in with storage and shipping and all this, don't we want to double our money, at least, a retailer? Is that fair or not? That's, I mean, right, yeah, go. absolutely. Okay, okay, good. So so they're like, okay, yes, we can make a price for you. It'll be $180. I'm like, $180? So you think I'm going to make what? Our, our discount codes eats that uh eats that $200, prop, that $20 profit. Uh, what about shipping? What about custom? How mm-hmm. are we supposed to make any money? You're going to sell them direct. All right, good luck to you. Sell them direct. Everyone's getting their broken bases, and people are waiting six weeks to get their product. Like, why can't they come up with a price that works like pretty much everything else in any uh, uh, channel of distribution? You make different price breaks, categories, so that us guys who are going to push them for you will actually make some money doing this, and we're not doing mm-hmm. this uh, out of our hearts. I mean, in the end, it is a business. I'm not going to bring in a Matt pair that cost me $200 and sell it to you for $200. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah, it's going to be like 400 um, bones. I, I know that Sky Hookah Distribution is selling their full Matt pair setups. Cause, you know, the Matt pair normally comes with your base, your host tray, and stem. Like, full full package. Well, to get the full package from Sky, it's like, it's it's over $300, well over $300. So people don't, I feel like people may not understand the markup that comes with selling these products that come from overseas. And it's not like you're gonna buy them yourself. Ordering these products from Russia is a bitch. I've done it before. Right, I have one package that's lost. What is it, uh, food hookahs? I've got a package that like, I've got my tracking number here. I'm looking at it. It's It's been missing for three months. And it says, it says it was delivered in Atlanta and then rerouted and I don't know where. I'm like, Atlanta, who the hell? All right, it's going <laughs> through the post office. They make their mistakes, but okay, great. Now I've got like $2,000 somewhere in the world and mm-hmm. i don't know where it is so we have to take those risks need absorb those costs it happens it's not it's not common so i shouldn't complain about it i mean that's really like maybe only the second time that's ever happened um but yeah they if, if uh, those guys from sky are selling it for 300 and i kind of know their costs good maybe they're making it and then it's worth it um but yeah i i've approached matt pair before um and since it didn't work out i'm gonna i'm looking at other products too I'm trying to find some more affordable pipes too. I think I'm going to do that with some of these Brazilian pipes that I brought back. Mm-hmm. Um, they may not be on the par of all. Now I don't know every Russian product. They're not all great quality. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. Some of them aren't really made in Russia. Um, it's like a lot of hookahs here in the U.S. aren't made in the U.S. Whatever. I'm just trying to bring. Uh, I want to try to pick a few of the lower end hookahs. Like when we had the Aviator hookah at that uh, full complete package. That was a great deal. I forget what it was, 150 with Boho, Pose, uh, H-Gable, uh, Kilo Colt. I mean, there you go. I actually All picked right. mine up from you and you had it marked down to 80 bucks, which by the way, that I don't think the Aviator was worth the original asking price, but the reduced price that you had at, one of the best hookers for the money. Right, definitely. But the thing is right now, I don't have anything in that category. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to, I mean, we've got, 
the Starbucks complete packages at like two thirty five. All right. Yeah, it's still it's still up there in price. You got MIGs at uh, starting price at three hundred dollars. You got um, what else do we have? Hoops are way up there. They're all good products and everything, but I, I just need to have uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think a few more, and I think I'll be getting them from Brazil soon. Now I've got a question from the Hookah Lounge's very own Tommy. Um, John, how involved are you personally in production and research and development? Like, do you learn about clay, coals, etc., or hire experts? A little bit about both. I kind of asked. Thanks for the for the um, for the question, Tommy. Um, yeah, with whether it's coals or bowls, yeah, I tell them what I want and my specifications. But at the same time, you can't ask for things that are impossible to make. Like you hear some people saying, "Oh, if I was going to do this, I would make." A hundred dollar hookah that's gonna be way better than any of the five hundred dollar hookahs. It's gonna be made out of a uh, hundred percent aluminum, uh, grade CNC machined and, and crystal base and all that, and they're gonna sell it to you for a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. right? Well, you go for it. You get that <laughs> done because it's not gonna happen. Um, it's just not gonna happen. So what I try to do is learn as much as I can about how they're making these products and what the they have parameters that they can work with it. And once in a while, it is okay, you know what, with that hose that we're going to come out, it's probably going to be in the $70 range. I think it's too, super expensive, but you might like it when you see the, the final result, and how heavy and uh, awesome it is. Do you need it? Is it going to be better than this $20 hose? It, it's preference. Subjective, but, right. Yeah, so I'm going to, um, so so to answer Tommy's question, I do get very involved with the research and development of the products. like. The shape of the bowls, obviously, we do that, and then like the depth and specifications on like how wide the spire is, and then the design on the outside. But I can't ask for um, like one time one of the guys watching, he's he knows what I'm talking about. He tried to come up with this idea. He's like, I got this great idea for this complex bowl, and I, I can't give you the exact design because it's still his design. He may make it, but it had all these intricate features in it. I'm like, these are potters spinning it on a wheel and trying to ship them out, uh, you know, by the time they get them to us and we mark it up, they're not making a, a ton of money for the, the bowl that he was saying might take a whole day to make one. So, okay, great. So let's let's uh, factor in costs of what one guy's daily rate is, um, how much it costs to like house this stuff and all that. Here, fine, here's a $200 bowl. Mm -hmm. it's, it wouldn't even be that, it would be more than that. So. Yeah. There's it's a there's a limit for sure. Like you're talking about that hose being seventy bucks, people are picking up these timber hose handles that can run anywhere between sixty five and eighty dollars. But it's kind of like an artist pro artist style product. You don't need it, but there's people who actually want to collect this stuff, and that's what's nice about hookah. You can collect shit that are willing to put that kind of money. But a two hundred dollar bowl, it's kind of interesting you say that. So at the Chicago hookah meetup, um, Nino actually auctioned off a one off bowl that he made. Um, it's called the Enthusiast Bowl or something. It, it, it was just one bowl, and it sold for two hundred and fifty dollars. What bowl was that? It's a one-off bowl. It looks a lot like the Relics Bowl. Oh, not the Relics. It's a Kyle Smith product. The Helix Bowl, his newest, um, the handmade sister bowl to the uh, Onyx Bowl, and it right. looked kind of like that to me. It, it holds. It's got a pretty big capacity. The whole idea was, you get this bowl, and then you smoke it with your buddies for like seventeen hours or whatever. And um, some guy bought it. I think it was the guys from Hookah Rush over in, I think they're in Ohio. They bought it for 250 bucks. It was auctioned. It was insane. That's crazy. That's awesome that that, that happens once in a yeah. while. Uh, it's all in good fun. Um, but there, there is a reality to the way uh, things need to be made. Cause we're actually working on something that's top secret, and I'm hoping it's going to be made before the Boo. expo. This is more of a, um, a technical project. Um, I don't want to give away too much on it, but I'm just looking at the price and it's going to be up there and will it sell? That's a problem. It has to be mass produced in order to get the costs down, but just the materials being used and the um, all of the um, research and development going on on it, it may not make the market. I mean, what if I told you here's this one product for hookah that's like 200 bucks and you're going to be like, well, I am already smoking hookah. I don't need to spend $200 to smoke it pretty much the same. Yeah. So it may not, it may or may not come to market, and um, it'll be awesome if it does. It's going to be a crazy yeah. product. So um, I, I see. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So the guys, 
The people that make them don't know anything about hookah. It's the same thing with the guys who are making the bowl don't know anything about hookah. The guys who are making the uh, charcoal don't know anything about hookah. Um, so I have a lot of input, and this is going back to Tommy's question. There's a ton of input that I'm giving in um, in the research and development because in the end, uh, it's like I'm the ambassador for the consumer, meaning you know, sometimes people come up with products, they have no background in hookah. All right, they have all the facilities to make things, and they might look nice and shiny and bright and all that, but they don't work too well. So right. that's my job is to create, find people who can find the facilities and the resources to do this, and then I uh, I go in and support it and, and see if we can make them into uh, real products. Now, I've saved the last question, um, the best question, rather, for last, and this is from Brandon Stockton, and he says, Hey, John, long-time fan, first-time caller. So, random question. When you wake up in the morning, do you know you're going to wake up looking so good, or does your beauty take time? <laughs> that takes a lot of time, man. I got to talk about this haircut. I'm so, I'm so, like, how do I say this? Okay, my, my stylist is, I said I need to cut my hair lately. I, I got to get it short. He's like, John, please, let me do this for you. Let me please do this for you. I'm like, what? He's like, I want to shave this line in your head. I'm like, no, dude, no. We went on for 15 minutes. He just sat there, like looking at me, like, John. Come on, come on, try something. <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking. I'm like, all right, it's only here. It'll grow back. And he did this, and I'm laughing. I'm like looking at myself, and I'm describing myself. I am the guy that you can't take seriously. I don't take myself seriously now because of this haircut. It, I look like, um, you know, I just turned 45, okay, and I look like I'm going through a midlife crisis. But I can't stand this haircut. I can't wait till it grows back. I think it looks good, it, man. Uh, thank you, and it, it is fresh and it's hit, but it's just not me. How about that? Um, but Brandon, thank you for that question. I was just telling you how I really feel, and um, it won't be like this for long. But uh, no, in the morning I'm a nightmare. My hair is all over the place. I took a picture. I wonder if it's on my phone. I want to take one picture of a morning. Oh, Brandon, you want to see what I look like? Hold on. Let me find it for you. Oh, here we go. This should be good. What's going on, Alexi? I wanted to do a before look, and this is incredibly terrible uh let's see if i can find it god i don't want to take too much time let's see if i can find it come on come on come on come on there it is oh my god wanna let's see how we can get this up there whoa perfect you think like right. you're in a boy band john <laughs> so that's what the <laughs> all the gel is dried out and it's just um so my only complaint on having hair like that is like you know how much product it takes and um i don't know but i don't like being super short either anymore so yeah. who knows who cares right. um Brandon, i am going to uh yeah absolutely i'm going to close up questioning here because we're moving on to an hour but i do have one more question i guess i'll get to because this is kind of an interesting one this is from baki again i hope i'm pronouncing your name somewhat correctly um john hi you and oh it just disappeared john hi you and omar omar alpaca will you think well, you think, oh, do you think you would ever build a bowl together, like partner up? He thinks it would be a good idea. So that's an interesting question. Like something kind of like a uh, collaboration project on some strange bowl. Who could John meet alpaca? I don't know about that. That's a good question. I never thought about it. Um, what could be the final result? What could we make together? Um, I mean, it could be a cool idea for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a, a blend that two bowls came together and came up with like one bowl. Um, but in reality, um, Omar's got his business going, I've got mine going. Um, it's really time consuming. Like, I think someone had asked me from one of the groups, I, I know he did, and he, he wanted a, the personal stamp on it. He wanted 20 bolts. I'm like, that's gonna like, it's, that's where it came up where it's throwing a monkey wrench into the machine basically. Mm -hmm. Because uh, things are going on a production line and it's not, it's not like a literal production line. It's just they have schedules and things that they have to do to stop and try to make just a quick run of 20 bowls is not as simple as it sounds. Right. So for Omar to stop doing what he's doing and me to stop, it'd be pretty hard to do. But if there is an idea and Omar comes up with an idea, I'm willing to entertain it. Yeah, it seems like it would be a logistical nightmare, but I think that would be a pretty, like a limited run type of an enthusiast product. I think people would buy those up. Because I feel like at this point, hookah john bowls and alpaca bowls are the two biggest names in the American market. And um, I feel like most enthusiasts, you know, tend to buy from both vendors, both you and Omar. 
Um, I think, right. John, it's been like an hour and a minute and 54 seconds. I think that pretty much wraps this up. Is there anything you'd like to add before we let these people go on with their evenings? I don't know. I didn't have an agenda. We talked about the Bulls and the Expo. And um, just, okay, I'll wrap it up. I uh, want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the questions. Uh, you guys are, oh, actually, can we do one more topic? I was thinking about Absolutely. what's up with all these different, what's up with all these different hookah groups? You got this group, <laughs> that group, uh, the old groups, the new groups. I can't keep up anymore. I don't know who's who. And then there's like little beefs in between them. I'm like, I can't watch this. I, I can't like keep reading and I don't know who's my, am I gonna, someone getting, gonna get mad at me cause I'm friends with this guy and not that guy. And so uh, that's like, I don't know. I don't have a solution to that. I know someone tried to like unite the groups. That, uh huh. Yeah. That was a that, fucking nightmare. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> a nightmare waiting to happen. Um, but it does get really confusing going through your Facebook feed and seeing all these different groups and then like one thing cracked me up. Is Sally now an admin here or a moderator here? Sally and THL, no, I do not believe so. Although I'm a moderator and I don't know things until like 10 days later, so. And maybe she's an awesome person. Yes. And maybe she's admin at Huga University. But wasn't she part of that Huga group? Yeah, she was a and prolific poster. I, no, you you know, know, there's so many people that try to come up with these new Facebook groups because they don't like th the way things are being done in a certain group. And to me, it all gets pretty convoluted and honestly pretty fucking dumb. Like, I, right now, even like right now, there's too many active Facebook groups. You've got, what's really weird is they all act like, oh, I've got more members than you. And it's like the same fucking group of 8,000 people that are in all the groups, you know? Yeah. Plus the like 10,000 bots that fly around in those different groups too. Yeah. I mean, we're all, we're all part of the one greater hookah community and all that, and I get it. Um, but I don't know. I only did it because forums died. I had to get a hookah group. It was mm -hmm. like, uh, a lot of people were going towards that way. And, um, who knows? I mean, for me, I should say like being in this business, uh, the more groups, the better, the more exposure, but it's like really confusing when it comes down to like our kind of core root cause of hookah, whatever you want to call it. It's just a little, um, confusing, but anyways, it's all good. So, uh, to wrap up, thank you guys for watching. I want to thank uh, everyone who bought tickets, and I know a bunch more are you of you are going to, and um, it's going to be a blast. Thank you big time to the uh, exhibitors who came out this year. That was one of the reasons why I wasn't going going to do it because I I didn't want to make a um, a half fast expo, and a lot of them came out, and we've got a lot more that are signing up that are. Uh, when they're on the fence, they're on the fence for a week. So yep. I'm waiting for, I think, two or three more and hoping to grow it even bigger than that so we can expand it to the next space. Um, thank you guys for your orders and support over the years. I know Adrian said he's been following for a long time. I know there's a lot of you guys out there. So um, thanks for everything, guys. It's awesome. All right, you guys, that's going to cover it. Thank you so much, the guys from THL. This is their birthday. That's why we did this. Thank you, John, for coming on and doing this with me. This is, like, the coolest thing ever. Probably, like, the most awesome thing I've done so far in my time on Hookah social media, so I'm pretty pumped. And, um, dude, I think that wraps it up. You ready to get the hell out of here, John? Go on with your evening. I'm sure you want to go home at this point. Definitely. All right. Thanks a lot, Adrian. Thanks, guys. Yep. So take it easy, guys. Happy smoking. See you, guys.